All right, welcome back everyone. And today we're going to explore something called thousands. And so we've talked a little bit about tenths and hundredths. Maybe you did a little bit of that in grade four, but now we're moving into this idea of thousands. And so just to get our brain warmed up, we have this design here of a hundred small square tiles. What fraction of the design does each color represent? All right, I think it's important to to review place value. And so I did this a, a few lessons ago, but um, we're dealing with this area here. And today we're really focused on that digit, the thousandths digit. So please remember it goes tenths, then hundredths, then, a, then thousandths. And so we can show thousands a few different ways. We can use something called base 10 blocks. Now, when we're talking about thousands, there is a thousand cubes make up one whole. And so we have to shift our thinking if you're used to base 10 blocks. This three dimensional cube is that, you know, that you might consider as the thousand block is now considered one. And so this is now considered one hundredth because 10 of those make up one. And this would be considered a hundredth because a hundred of those will go into there and that makes this guy here worth the thousandth which a thousand of these will go into there and so looking at my example here I have three flats so there's zero ones but there is three tenths there is four hundredths and there's five thousandths so this is three hundred forty five thousandths Um, I get you to try this one. Pause it. Think about it. What is the decimal here? It's being considered. Uh, please remember again, this is one, this is a tenth, this is a hundredth, and this is now a thousandth. Pause it. Come back when you're ready. All right. So I have two holes. So two ones. I don't have any tenths. So I'm going to put a zero there. I do have one hundredth and I do have three thousandths. So I would say two and... 13 thousandths. Now this this decimal here we now say and and that's only we only say that and if there is ones or tens or hundreds like normal digits that you've been working on but we can say two and thirteen thousandths. I want you to try this one pause it come back when you're ready. All right so there is zero ones there is zero tenths, there is zero hundredths, but there is eight thousandths. So we would say eight thousandths. Now we can show numbers with thousands in different ways. And so I have this half here. And so I'm going to slowly reveal um, what's going on there. But I, I'm eventually going to try and get to a denominator of a thousand. And so what I can do here is I can multiply the top and bottom, the numerator and denominator by five in order to get a denominator 10 and that 10 is going to help us because I can get to a thousand by multiplying 10 by 100 and then I get 500 thousandths and so these are equivalent decimals and so one half is equivalent to five tenths five tenths is equivalent to 500 thousandths 500 thousandths we can write as 0 0.500 so one half is equivalent to 500 thousandths very similarly, I have two fifths. I need to get, I need to get that five to a multiple of 10 so I can get to a thousand. So I'm going to multiply by two again, becomes four tenths. And I multiply that four tenths by a hundred in order to get there. So 400 thousandths is equivalent to two fifths. I'm going to get you to try one here. I'm going to give you one quarter. I'd like you to pause it. I want you to get it to a thousandth. So what are you going to have to do here? What are you going to have to multiply the numerator denominator by in order to get to a thousandth? Pause it, come back when you're ready. All right, to get this four to a, a, to a hundred, I guess, is to multiply top and bottom by 25. And so one times 25 is 25. Four times 25 is a hundred. Now to get to a hundred to a thousand, I have to multiply by 10 now. And so numerator and denominator, to multiply 25 times 10, it's 250. So one quarter is equivalent to 250 thousandths. And so all in all, one quarter and 250 thousandths 
are equivalent. We can use something called expanded form, and we've dealt with this in a previous unit. We can say that um, 3 and 248 thousandths, we could break that up 3 ones plus 2 tenths plus 4 hundredths plus 8 thousandths. You could use words like that, but it's really acceptable to, to write it like this. So 3 plus 2 tenths plus 4 hundredths plus 8 thousandths. That is called expanded form. And if we add, were to add all those together, it would equal our number right here. And similarly, I have 5 and 631 thousandths. And so I can say 5 plus 6 tenths plus 3 hundredths plus 1 thousandths equals 5 and 60, sorry, 5 and 631 thousandths. I'm going to get you to try this one. I have 3 and 268 thousandths. Don't worry about the words one. I'm just going to go over the numerical expanded form. Please try that out. Pause it. Come back when you're ready. All right. So I have 3 ones plus 2 tenths plus 6 hundredths plus 8 thousandths. There you go. Now we could also use something called this thousandths grid. And so each one represents one whole. So this whole picture represents one. And it contains 1,000 congruent squares. Congruent is a fancy word that means equal size. And so I can look, I can think about this a few different ways. I have 300 small squares that are colored right now. So 300 thousandths or 0 0.300. Uh, sorry, we say that 300 thousandths um, is colored. Or I can think about um, equal rows, like that's a row. Um, going this way is a row. I have 30 of those all together. If I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know, etc. 30 rows of 10 small squares are colored. So I could say that 30 hundredths or a decimal of 30 hundredths. Or I could just look at it as, you know, this is one large square and three of them are colored. So three out of 10 of them or so three tenths and we could write the decimal like so. And so when we have this, we can find out that these decimals equal each other. The picture hasn't changed. So um, 300 thousandths, 30, 30 tenths, and 3 tenths name the same picture. They're the same amount. So we call these equivalent decimals. All right, I, wanna, I want you to try this one. What is the three equivalent decimals here? So I need something out of tenths. I need something out of hundredths. And I need something out of thousandths. Pause it. Come back when you're ready. All right, in terms of thousandths, remember each one of these represents a hundred. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six hundred thousand. So our decimal will be six hundred thousandths. If I consider the rows only, I have 10 in each one. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60 out of a possible hundred my decimal would be 60 hundredths. And if I'm talking about just big squares, I again have six out of 10 possible squares, that would be six tenths. So what is equivalent? Six tenths equals 60 hundredths equals 600 thousandths. They're all equivalent decimals. How do we know how to write the fraction as a decimal? Well, we're gonna review this place value again. So please remember that the first digit after the decimal is tenths. The next one is hundredths. Please excuse my chicken scratch here. And the, the last one that we're showing here is thousandths. Those words are important. So 254 thousandths, sorry, there should be another zero, is um, the decimal that we would write here. And so um, the way I pronounce this is this goes to the thousandths place. So 254 ends in the thousandths. So we would say 254 thousandths. That's where the last digit ends on. So I'd like you to try some here. Um, I'd like you to pause it. I'd like you to change this into a decimal and then we, we need to say it properly. So pause it, come back when you're ready. All right, so the first one is 398 out of 1,000. So that eight in 398 has to land on the thousand spots. So there is our decimal, and we would pronounce this as 398 thousandths. 
the second one here, 25 needs to land on the on the thousand spot. So if it's easier, consider putting some some lines out. I know that there's three in a thousandths. That five has to land on that thousand spot. That means this is the two. But what do I put here? I would put a zero. So I'm going to say this incorrectly, but 0 0.025. But we pronounce that as 25 thousandths because that five lands on the thousand spot. I have two more here. I'd like you to try these out. Pause it. Come back when you're ready. All right. I have 777. I need to have that land on the thousand spot. That digit lands on the thousand spot. 777 thousandths. And then I have an eight. And if you have um, one or two, you know, two digits here, maybe it's better to make these spaces. And I know that that eight has to land on there. I don't have anything else to place, so I'm going to put zeros here. So I would say that is eight thousandths. All right, so we've looked at this thousandths place, and we've looked at different ways that it can be written through equivalent fractions or equivalent decimals, and we're learning how to say it properly. And we're also learning how to change it into a decimal properly so that it does indeed, when I say indeed, the last digit indeed lands on the thousandth spot. All right, thank you guys, and remember, in life, math happens. Take care.